y'all. Welcome to Heisha's Gospel and Truths. In this video, I will be talking about the manipulation of Camilla Bowles. How she refused to let go of Prince Charles despite him being married with children. How she wants the title of being Queen and Princess, but doesn't want to do the work. How racist she is, and how she, you know, whipped Prince Charles and played on his insecurities and weaknesses to get what she wanted. Let's talk. video about this after finally finishing the crown series my suspicions were confirmed my suspicions were and were true of the agenda of Camilla have any of you ever wondered why Camilla never stopped seeing Charles even after he got married and had kids okay yes because she she knew that he only married just turned 20 year old Diana late Diana because of obligation and duty but she was still messing around with her husband, Andrew, I believe, and Charles at the same time. You know what? Take a look at these clips. From soldier's wife to royal mistress to royal consort, Camilla Parker Bowles has made a unique transformation. This majestic makeover has been achieved by expensive grooming. Cosmetic dentistry, Botox injections, and even a facelift have been rumored. Dowdy country clothes have been banished and replaced by sleek new outfits. Couture houses such as Valentino and Versace now clothe the mature figure so loved by the Prince of Wales. No longer hiding in rural seclusion, Camilla enjoys the ritz and glitz of her celebrity status. Plays and premieres, grand dinners and parties, lavish holidays and suites in royal homes fill the life of the best-kept woman in Britain. Camilla was carefully repackaged and presented to the public as a wife in waiting. She is the official uh, Mrs. Wales. She's having a wonderful time. Money is no object. Charles adores her. He showers her with jewels. She is a very rich woman now, thanks to her royal lover. A front row place beside the catwalk at fashion parades, such as Stella McCartney's Chloe show in Paris, mark Camilla as a client with international prestige. She's learned to dress the royal way, with restrained outfits, conspicuous hats and serious jewellery. Camilla gets sent to New York to have a bit of a makeover and she gets given a, a, a big clothes allowance by Charles to go and look right. The one thing where she does, of course, score wonderfully now, she is beginning to get some decent jewellery, the proper stuff from Charles. Camilla is adorned with fabulous gems at events such as her 50th birthday party held at Highgrove, Charles's country home. At his 50th party, she wore this aquamarine and diamond necklace. It belonged to her great-grandmother, Alice Keppel, mistress of King Edward VII, Charles's great-great-grandfather. Charles is fascinated by today's repetition of their great romance. He goes out of his way to find jewellery which belonged to her great-grandmother, Alice Keppel. Uh, he wants to revisit history, and what he's done is gone out of his way to try and find all the jewellery which King Edward VII gave to Alice Keppel and give it back to Camilla. Now, you can call it sentimental, or you can call it what you want. Some would call it expensive. Charles learned that a well-kept mistress can cost as much as a wife. Camilla wears clothes from Versace one of Diana's favorite fashion labels. The princess wore a Versace gown in Chicago in 1996. Tall, slim, and elegant, she was an iconic style setter. Glamour gowns are less suited to the more matronly figure, as Camilla has discovered. I think she feels uncomfortable wearing these clothes, which is why she is such a figure of fun with the British press. It doesn't quite hang together right and uh, she does not like the comparisons with Princess Diana. Well, a lot of photographers came to me recently and said, my God, we took some pictures of Camilla last night and she looked transformed. She was a different woman, no lines on around her eyes. Apart from that, I've noticed that she's trying a lot harder with her makeup and her hair. For many years, Camilla and I have been to the same hairdresser and I've seen her sitting at the next wash basin to me. But when she had her hair done, 
she'd insist on brushing it out herself. She wouldn't let the professionals do it. And she always had a kind of 1970s bad fire or faucet majors kind of look to her hair that was very dated, but she seemed to like it like that. That seems to have changed. It's a bit more slick, it's a bit more polished, a bit more professional nowadays. So she's certainly trying harder. And one reason for that, so I'm told, could be that she's worried about hanging on to her prince and she's trying very hard to, to look the part and to keep him. Luxurious holidays, courtesy of wealthy friends with sumptuous villas and palatial yachts, have a certain appeal. A Greek island's cruise on the mega yacht Alexander cost $90,000 a day, but it's free to Charles, Camilla and their guests. There are Charles's residences to enjoy. Highgrove, with its cherished gardens and admired architecture, was chosen by Camilla. It's where she stables her horses, convenient for a woman who likes to hunt with the local gentry, a hobby which costs Charles around £45,000 a year. On the Queen's Balmoral estate in Scotland, there is Burke Hall, once the Queen Mother's home. It was the scene of many a secret rendezvous. She was quite willing to throw open her house at Burke Hall in the Highlands for Charles and Camilla. And of course nowadays, it's Charles's home. The Queen has, has passed it on to him and he's redecorated it and he and Camilla spend many holidays there. Owned by a trust, the Castle of May on the northern tip of Scotland was the Queen Mother's private home. Charles adored his grandmother and feels that he and Camilla are keeping her memory alive by staying in her favourite retreat. Camilla is Chatelain of Clarence House, the Queen Mother's old London home. It's worth £150 million. When everybody moved into Clarence House once its refurbishment was complete, that William and Harry found themselves living for the first time with their father's mistress. Now, if that was difficult enough, it was made more difficult by the fact that Camilla also imported her father, Major Bruce Shand. And so suddenly, there are people uh, that they don't really know terribly well, and they're supposed to share a roof with them. And I think both William and Harry found that a very uncomfortable experience. Mark Bolland, who has since left the Prince's household for a media relations career, also served Camilla. Courtiers like Bolland owed allegiance to both the Prince and his mistress. I wouldn't call them sycophants, but I would say that they're all extremely loyal to Prince Charles, and therefore, when Camilla moved in, they're extremely loyal to her. If they want to keep their jobs, they have to like it or lump it. Being a royal courtier is uh, pretty much a lickspittle job, you know, you, you uh, tug your forelock to the boss and if the boss has got a new girlfriend, then you go along with whatever the girlfriend says. Whatever they feel privately, she's part of the management team now and they have to work to her as well as work to Prince Charles. It's a wonderful life for a woman who lives like a queen but has few duties, except taking over Charles's splendid homes. Camilla is now running the royal show. She's in charge of three royal residences, uh, Clarence House, the main royal residence, Burke Hall, the Scottish residence, and Highgrove, which, you must remember, is the house that she chose for Prince Charles, not Prince Charles choosing for himself. She had a very strong say in the way that the houses were refurbished. Uh, she oversaw the way that the gardens were reorganized and she really really runs the everyday business of all the royal palaces on Prince Charles's behalf. She's a very powerful figure in that way and although we don't see very much of her in public at the moment you mustn't underestimate the power which she wields both, both over the Prince of Wales and the Prince of Wales's staff and households. Camilla's own home, Raymill House, was bought after her divorce in 1995. Smaller and less imposing than Highgrove a few miles away, the house was redecorated and the gut. You know, after watching all of this and comparing that to my notes and research and so on, I realized that Charles has a serious mommy complex and Camilla knew how to play it. She didn't care about him like that. She played on Charles' weakness and naiveness and used it. Heck. That with some the JJ and more, she had this fool Charles wrapped around her freaking finger. I mean, this woman is lazy as hell. She hates the heat and she doesn't like traveling or anything that involves working, and this is a fact. 
This gold digger just wants to smell and drink. Lost the family diamonds. Spend and dine. The same thing goes for Charles. He's the same. He, he's lazy as hell too. The dear sweet Diana was too much for Charles. She was genuinely a beautiful soul. And that quality always shined through. And the public loved it and still do. And Charles' insecure narcissistic ass was jealous. I mean, have any of you realized what would happen if Camilla becomes queen? What moral lesson would her life story teach young girls? That they can be mistresses, homewreckers, stepmother to the children of the women they destroyed, and finally become queens. Oh yes, just no. I mean, she literally married Andrew, had kids, while still fucking Charles, while Camilla's husband Andrew screwed Charles' sister Anne on the side, just a big family bows orgy oh yes disgusting and Charles still kept messing around with Camilla I mean how dumb can you be I mean no offense Camilla isn't the best looking woman in the world and the family jewels look hideous on her those family jewels haven't looked beautiful on anyone since the late Princess Diana and with diamonds like that it's supposed to stand alone the Queen scares me with her looks no offense Oh, and Prince William is no better. He's just like his father. I mean, like father, like son. And Kate is also, she just as snooky as William, whom has never been faithful. I'm talking about William. And Kate knows it. This marriage is for showmanship only. You see, this is why the queen hasn't passed the throne to Charles yet. He's too gullible and easily manipulated. How are you going to run a country when you fell for Camilla, who was bluntly obvious of what she wanted? I would be like, you would get this thrown over my dead body, okay? I don't care if I'm decrepit. They will be willing me all along these red carpets in church or whatever I have to go. Oh, yes. I mean, he literally had a woman. Yes, yeah, she was young and she didn't know a lot, but she was willing to allow you to teach her everything. Teach her the protocol, the decorum. She was yearning for your love and she's beautiful. But you let your insecurities and Camilla put thoughts in your head. And now look, it's like you gave up a diamond for lint. It's not even lint. I mean, seriously. You literally screwed over a beautiful woman who was willing to worship you, literally, if you would have returned the same love that she was willing to give you. But you screwed that over for Camilla, who only used you for your name and money. Her family is a family built on gold digging and being mistresses. Okay, Diana stole your shine. So what? You should be happy that she's beautiful and women find your wife, who chose you, by the way, beautiful. But you took it as, oh, she's still in my shine. That way of thinking is not normal. And what's really, really disturbing is that I think I saw an interview with um, Prince William and Prince Harry, and it was like, oh, our father was there for us after our mother passed away. He was very supportive. Okay, if he did have something to do with your mother's death, and I'm still on the fence with that, by the way. I think his father had more soul to do with that, but I don't know. Anyway, if he had something to do with it, do you think he's going to disregard you and treat you like crap? I mean, like, no. No. He'd be more loyal and more, I don't know, nurturing than ever. I mean, he's very good at acting, if you haven't noticed. I mean, the man is a serious good actor, I'm just saying. And, you know, I'm well, that's it. Let me know, <laughs> let me know your thoughts below. And that note to don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post more videos. Love you all. See you all later. Bye.